There's a lake of lava at the end of Leilani Avenue. If you're brave or foolhardy enough, you can walk through the falling ash to the end of the melting road and take some pictures. As darkness falls, you can see Kilauea in all her glowing glory. She shoots red hot lava in fountains into the air from vents newly formed on the surface all around. She forces fissures open more than 20 now to send ripples of molten rock into the streets and over the houses of those who built on her rocky slopes. And she's not done yet. I can feel the volcanic ash crunching underfoot as I walk, but the amazing thing here is that a lava fountain shooting hot lava more than 100 meters up into the night sky. You can see the gas and smoke billowing up into the air. Now, also in the distance, you can hear the roiling of that incredibly kind of hot liquid bubbling closer to the center of this eruption. Now, this area is safe for now, but all around us in this neighborhood, houses, streets are being eaten up by this molten lava as it moves inexorably forward. By morning, the lava quickly cools and hardens to form a surreal and ad hoc roadblock. Pools of lava splash and ooze beyond. Where just days ago houses stood on flat land, now they're ash and the molten rock has built a hillside. We can only enter Lava Zone 1 with a National Guard escort on the lookout for fast moving flows and dangerous gases. So right now we're getting zeros. The wind is perfect, blowing everything away. We should be fine down here. What about the residents at the moment in terms of alerting them, evacuating them? Uh, certain streets have been, uh, been mandatorily evacuated last mm -hmm. night. The firefighters and police went door to door to clear out certain blocks that were affected. But as of now... Affected means lava's rolling down their lava street. Lava's rolling down their street or their neighboring street. And they right. want them out in time. We drive into the housing subdivision called Leilani Gardens. It's lush and remote. Many live here off the grid, drawn by land prices more affordable than anywhere else in Hawaii. But among the palms and hibiscus, there are now fiery red blooms laying waste to those dreams of paradise. So this pretty blue clapboard house is on Luana Street here in Leilani Estates. It used to be in the middle of the street. Now it's at the end of the street because look what's rolled in. It's only come in in the last few days, the last three days. You can feel the heat of it. And as far as the eye can see, there's a shimmering haze. And you can, in some places, still see flames. And off in the distance, you can hear a kind of, a sound like a flowing river, but that's actually flowing lava. The extraordinary thing is to see this level of destruction, burnt out trees, smoke, haze, and these houses still standing just meters away. I never think it would come to Leilani Estates because how the, the mountain is. But nobody ever thought it'd come from underground too. Outside the evacuation zone at a locally run relief center, we meet Darnell. His house is still standing, but the conditions are too intense for him to stay there. It smell like sulfur, like little rotten eggs or you know, really strong smell, make your eyes burn. I understand that there are still uh, quite a number of people who are staying inside the Lani Estate. I know about 20 families. Why are they staying? Well, they have no place else to go. You know, it wasn't for Kimi. I won't stay at the shelter. You know, <laughs> I think I would stay there. Kimmy is one of the bodacious women of Nanavale, a grassroots relief group. She's hosting Darnell and two others, although she knows the power of Pele, the fire goddess, might come to her neighborhood next. I think Pele's going to work this out. Work it out how, though? For a little while, even. Just let off her steam. She's got a lot to vent. And... Of course, I don't know how all that works, but um, I'm fascinated by it. Mm. And I'm hopeful, and it doesn't hurt to say prayers. I'm very familiar with that volcano and Tutu Pele. Libby has been returning to Leilani Gardens every day in search of her cats. 
Her house was among the first lost to the lava. The lava's 12 feet high uh, in places is gone. It was a precious house. It was made with cedar. She tells me of the small treasures also lost, artifacts of many years living on the island she adopted as her home. I'm so lucky. I grew up a military brat. You don't have a home. And uh, you don't have ohana the way we have here, family. We're all family. It's not about bloodlines. To see the full extent of the damage wrought by Kilauea, we booked a flight with a local helicopter operator, normally busy with tourists, but these days providing additional guided views of the volcano. But there's no way out of there. No, so lots of these residents had to get out by helicopter. It is extraordinary. I can see a road. Is that a freeway down below where there's just a tiny circle of it still visible and all the rest being completely covered up by the magma. That is astonishing, isn't it? Let me uh, position so I can get a good angle on that. Our pilot, Daniel Speller, is from Bristol. He's become an expert on the destructive force of the shield volcano he flies over. So this steam cloud that we're seeing, this is composed uh, mainly of steam, but also there's some hydrochloric acid, as well as some minute little glass particles in there. And uh, that combination is fairly lethal. You definitely wouldn't want to breathe it in. It is an incredibly beautiful thing to look at, but also uh, there's no indication the volcano will lose that capacity both to terrify and astonish anytime soon. For scientists, it presents an opportunity to study an eruption more powerful than anything seen here for a generation. For some, it promises nothing less than secrets from the Earth itself. It provides us a window of a, a deeper level than usual because it hasn't been modified on its way to the surface. The fact that it's coming up so rapidly means that it's preserving the information that it carries from depth. Wow. I, I get the sense talking to other scientists here tonight that there is a real sort of sense of giddy excitement almost. Oh, I'm super excited. I mean, I've been waiting since uh, the early 70s to see a fountain, <laughs> honestly. So, so it's a big night for me. Even the scientists can't predict how long this continues. Already the volcano has reshaped the contours of the island and changed forever the future of those who live in Kilauea's shadow.